Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome back to the Wednesday evening service, uh, prayer meeting service for July 1st. Um, time has really flown by, and we're already here in the middle of summer. And so uh, hopefully you have been doing well, and hopefully you have been enjoying these recorded services. Um, Pastor has allowed me to uh, be able to give a short devotion here for the last recorded service. And so we are excited that this is going to be our last recorded service. Uh, hopefully by next week, uh, just one week from today, from the time of this recording, we will be back in God's house, full force, back to uh, a regular prayer meeting here in person, and also kids activities going on, youth group activities going on, uh, Sunday school on Sunday mornings, and so uh, hopefully transi transitioning back to the way that things were uh, before everything went down with the virus. And so uh, we hope that this has been a blessing to you and, in, and an encouragement uh, as, you know, while we've been separated and, and been uh, kind of set apart from our church family, that we've still been able to connect uh, you know, via YouTube and Facebook and, and all of that good stuff. And so hopefully this has been a blessing to you and an encouragement. But uh, certainly we are excited to get back into God's house here in person. Uh, but while this has been able to make us do, while we were not unable to gather, uh, we still have just missed being in God's house. And so uh, without further ado, we just have a few prayer requests, if you would. Uh, just continue to be mindful of those. Uh, specifically, uh, Brother Mike and Juanita Rahuff, just continue to pray for them. Keep them in your prayers uh, as he's going through his treatment. And uh, not only that, but please uh, be in prayer for Miss Shelly Jones as she is uh, uh, kind of struggling right now. And so just please continue to pray for her and uh, for her family that she'd be encouraged during this time. Please continue to pray for Brother Parker as well. And uh, pray for uh, everybody here at the church, all the staff, as uh, the many decisions moving forward with things for the church. Just help us. Uh, pray for us to be able to make the wise decisions on how to move forward here during this time. Um, certainly, we uh, want to make wise choices and wise decisions in all that we do that would uh, ultimately honor the Lord. So please uh, join us in prayer. Those are a few general requests. Um, certainly, there's, there's many more requests here at our church. And uh, if you would like to stay up to date on all of the prayer requests information here at the church, Feel free to reach out to myself or pastor, and we would be happy to put you on the email chain or the text chain that goes around, uh, keeping us up to date on all the uh, recent prayer requests within the church. And so if you would like to be added to that, feel free to reach out to us anytime, and we would be happy to put you on that. But those are uh, some of the prayer requests that we have uh, here. Uh, certainly, this time has been different. And it's been difficult for many people as we have been out of church. There's been people that have lost loved ones that's been hard to connect with. There's been people that have been going through difficult times, uh, you know, maybe financially by losing a job or uh, whatever it might be, where it has been hard to be able to connect to your church family. And so as we've been separated from this time, I hope that it's a time of uh, reflection for us as a church family and uh, just uh, to once again, gather a spirit of, of gratefulness for the ability to be able to gather in God's house. Uh, many people have said it already, but I'll, I'll just recite it once again that hopefully whenever we are uh, back in full force, that we just never once again regret the ability to gather in God's house with God's people. We have been blessed uh, to be able to, within the next week or two or however many, to be able to gather once again. There are many people all across the nation and all across the world that are still unable to gather and still uh, under strict uh, restrictions. And so uh, please keep all those people in your prayers, our missionaries, uh, all those that are trying to get to the foreign mission field and that are, have been over there, all the situations there. Just continue to pray for all those circumstances. But uh, truly, we at Bible Baptist Church have been blessed uh, by the Lord to be able to gather once again on Sunday mornings and Sunday evenings. And uh, what a blessing it has been and an encouragement to us. But uh, truly, we need to be thankful and grateful that God has delivered us. God is the one that has brought us back. It, you, you know, the government can do whatever they will, but it's ultimately the Lord that has shown us mercy and shown us grace to be able to allow us back in His house to gather together again as a church body and as a church family. And we ought never forget that, that this was not uh, the doing of our pastor, you know, being able to, to, to let us gather again or our government officials, but ultimately the Lord who showed us mercy and showed us grace 
and has allowed us to once again gather in His house. And so may we never forget that moving forward, that, that it's only by God's mercies that we've been allowed to regather. And so uh, tonight, I, I, I just want to bring a short challenge, a short devotion to you all about uh, entitled, Returning the Right Way. I believe that as we gather back here in God's house as a church family, that uh, the Bible gives some key principles on how we can return in the right way. After being separated and set apart and on a different schedule for so long, uh, really, this whole virus has just thrown a curveball into uh, everything that was the what we could call the normal. Certainly, as we have faced all that and now are coming back, we need to understand how to return the right way. And uh, as I was praying and uh, really asking the Lord about what He would have me bring, this passage of Scripture really came to my mind. Uh, it's in Nehemiah chapter number 8, if you have your Bible. Go ahead and turn with me there to Nehemiah chapter number 8 in the Word of God. And just in the first ten verses there, I believe that uh, God's Word sheds a little bit of light on how to return the right way. So we just have a few basic principles and a few basic points about this information. And so let's go ahead and read it, and then after that we will pray. The Bible says in Nehemiah chapter number 8, We'll skip a couple verses just for sake of time. But Nehemiah chapter 8, uh, starting verse number 1. And all the people gathered themselves together as one man into the street that was before the water gate. And they spake unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded to Israel. And Ezra the priest uh, brought the law before the congregation, both of men and women, and all that could hear with understanding upon the first day of the seventh month. And he read therein... Before the street that was before the water gate, from the morning until midday, before the men and the women and those that could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law. Uh, skip down to, uh, with me there, to verse uh, number 5, if you will. Uh, verse number 5. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, uh, Amen, with lifting up their hands. And they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So then skip down with me again to verse number 8, just for sake of time. So they read in the book of the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. And Nehemiah, which is... Uh, which is the Tershatha, and Ezra, the priest, the scribe, and the Levites that taught the people, said unto all the people, This day is holy unto the Lord your God. Mourn not, nor weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Verse 10. Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Join with me in prayer for just a few moments. God, we thank you for this time, uh, Lord, where we can just, uh, by way of uh, online connection, just be able to uh, come through to you, to you through your word. Father, we just ask that in these next few moments that, Lord, you would help me to be a blessing to your people and to me of myself. Fill me with your spirit. Um, help this uh, passage from your word be a challenge to us now. God, we love you, Lord. Thank you for all you're doing. We'll give you the glory. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So before uh, I get started, uh, just with a few short little points here, I, you have to really understand the background context of this passage that we're in. Uh, so the story of Israel is uh, really all of the Old Testament, and uh, as we know, as, as a Bible believer, stretching into the future. But you have to understand the concept of all that the people of Israel have been through up to this point. Uh, Moses, obviously, was the man who led them out of captivity, uh, out of Egypt, uh, through the many plagues, through parting the Red Sea, all that kind of stuff, moves them out. Then the time of, uh, of conquering comes through Joshua. Then uh, as the stage of the judges rolls through, the children of Israel did that which was right in their own eyes, uh, every man just according to what he thought was right. And then when uh, great problems or great distresses came from their own rebellion, they cried out to God, and God would send them a judge or a deliverer, somebody that would uh, once again bring them peace and prosperity in their lives. And then from that point, they wanted a king. So the, the time of the monarchy uh, resumes with King Saul being the first. 
After King Saul comes King David, who establishes the kingdom in a great way. And then Solomon, uh, who then follows David and builds the temple uh, with all these great riches that uh, the children of Israel were able to gather and conquer. And they are now a united nation. But as pastor, uh, before the whole virus, he went over on Sunday nights, the, the split kingdom. And how then from Solomon's split heart, ultimately a split kingdom ensued, in which the northern kingdom... Uh, split away from the south, and they each had their own kings and ruled in their own ways. And there really wasn't many great kings after that. Really very few and far between uh, for great kings. More in the south than there were in the north. And uh, ultimately the people rebelled against God. And despite God constantly coming to them, uh, constantly sending prophets, constantly reminding them of His law and His ordinance and His promise that if they'll just turn to Him and if they'll just trust in Him, He will deliver them out of their, their problems, out of their enemies. Yet still, the people rebelled and the people did not want to listen to God and instead went their own way. And because of that, ultimately the Lord led them into captivity and uh, the Babylonian captivity ensued. For uh, years and years, the, the people of, of God, the children of Israel, the chosen people, were now in bondage. They were now in captivity. They were now separated from all that they ever knew. And they grew up in that. And so, uh, in the book of Ezra and Nehemiah, we finally find the end of this captivity is coming. And God works in the hearts of the kings to be able to show mercy unto Israel, to be able to send Ezra and some people from Israel back to uh, restore the temple, restore uh, the sacrificial system that was supposed to be set up uh, by the children of Israel. And so uh, all of that ensues. Nehemiah, as Nehemiah picks up, goes back and, and rebuilds the wall. And there's many great trials and great difficulties that ensue in doing that. But ultimately, uh, the Lord prevails and uh, God's people prevail. And now Israel is finally ready to come back after all these years, after all this heartache, after all this struggle, after all this pain, finally ready to come back into their, uh, to their city, finally ready to come back to worshiping God as they're supposed to, finally ready to reestablish the sacrificial system uh, in which they can worship God. And they're finally ready to do all of that. But the problem is that the people have been separated from the house of God for so long, they really don't even know where to start. And so where we pick up here in Nehemiah chapter number 8, the people call out to Ezra and are asking him to read from God's book so that way they can understand what they need to do moving forward now that God has brought them back into their land. And certainly as the church today, we, we were separated for a while, but not in captivity like the children of Israel were. And while some of you might think, well, being trapped at home with my family or with my kids, well, that's captivity. Well, it's really not <laughs> in perspective. We, we have it way, way better than they did, uh, than the children of Israel did way back here. But certainly, the principle still applies that the people of God were separated from the house of God and are now returning after all of these years. And I believe that uh, through this passage that we just read a few moments ago, there's a few points that we can draw of what's the right way to return to God's house. You see, because after being separated for so long, uh, maybe some things in our own lives need to get right as we uh, prepare to come back into God's house. Some renewed mindsets that need to happen. Some renewed priorities that need to take place. And uh, certainly, we all need to examine our own lives. And so as we read this passage of Scripture, I'm just reminded of Romans chapter 15, verse number 4, which says that the things that were written, which were written aforetime were written for our learning. So way back here in Nehemiah chapter number 8, the principles still apply to our lives today. And we can learn from the children of Israel who returned back to God's house. So uh, very quickly, the first principle that I see from these children uh, of Israel that returned is that uh, they had a return to God's Word. Number one, that they had a return to God's Word. Verse number one of chapter number eight in Nehemiah says, And all the people gathered themselves together as one man into the street that was before the water gate. And they spake unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded to Israel. And Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation, both of men and women, and all that could hear with understanding upon the first day of the seventh month. So you see... It's not just a, a small select group of people in Israel that are saying, uh, okay, we want to hear what God has to say now. 
It's all the people, the Bible says, that all the people gather themselves together as one man in one accord there, and they're asking the man of God, they're asking Ezra to, to take the scribe, to take God's law and to read it to them so that way they can learn and apply it to their own lives. You see, they had a, ultimately a return to God's Word. You see, what got them in the mess that they were in in the first place was straying away from what God had said. God said, if, if, if you're ever in a bind, if you're ever in a mess, if you're ever in sin, just turn to me, repent, and I will show you grace, I will show you mercy, I will deliver you out of your enemies. The time of the judges is a great representation of that. But instead, uh, the children of Israel turned away from God. And, and these people knew that. They knew that they have just been delivered from captivity for all these years because they didn't listen to God in the first place. They said, so here's what we want to do. Collectively, we want to hear what God's Word has to say. So that way we cannot just hear it, but listen and understand it and apply it to our own lives. They came back with the desire to hear and obey the words of the Lord. They were willing to get right no matter the cost. After all this time, many of them had forgotten many of the ordinances and statutes of the Lord and had just strayed away and just gotten into uh, the lackadaisical attitude of the world. But as they returned back to God's house, they needed to be reminded of how God's sacrificial system was set up, of how God wanted them to worship, of what God expected from them in their lives, and how to purify themselves. And you see, uh, that's one of the greatest problems with Christianity today with the church in America, is that we have a lot of Christians that are spiritually weak and anemic because they do not desire the sincere milk of the Word, as Peter tells us that we ought to. We are, are, are uh, lacking in spiritual knowledge and in spiritual wisdom because we are not uh, applying God's Word to our lives. We're not taking God's truth and applying it really as we ought to. And because of that, we have grown weak and we have grown complacent in where we are with the Christian life. And it's easy to do that. And sometimes it's even easy to think, well, this certain person has arrived. You've never arrived in the Christian life. There's, there's no way you could figure out all of Scripture and all of God's Word. Uh, it's, it's endless. Its uh, depths and its riches are uh, innumerable. And so you've never arrived. But we ought to approach, as these people did, and said, we want to learn. And as we gather back in God's house, we need a desire for God's Word again. To say, God, we know we're not perfect, but we want to learn. We want to grow. We want to develop spiritually as strong Christian people for you. To be able to do something big for God. I'm reminded in James, the Bible tells us to be doers of the Word and not hearers only. Verse number 3 in Nehemiah 8 tells us... Uh, and he read therein, that's Ezra, read the, read the book of the law therein before the street, that was before the water gate, from the morning until midday, before the men and the women and those that could understand. And the ears of all the people were, look at that word, attentive unto the book of the law. The people were attentive to God's word. My dad used to always tell me whenever he was expounding his, his years and, and de of depth and, and wisdom and knowledge to me, he would always say, are you, are you listening or do you just hear me? I'd say, Dad, what in the world are you talking about? There's no difference. Those words mean the same thing. He said, no, no, you can hear me without listening. <laughs> and it isn't really until I got older that I really understood what he was talking about. Oftentimes, if we're not careful, we can just hear God's word, but we're not really listening. And the difference is, is that when we're listening, we're actually attentive, as these people were in verse number 3. We're trying to listen so we can ap apply it to our lives. We're not just in one ear, out the other, hearing what God's Word has to say. We are listening and attentively trying to adapt our own lives. And, and look at the Bible like a mirror, like the looking glass that it is, by which we can compare ourselves and understand that our own lives need to be molded and transformed by its principles. So how about us? Are we returning back to God's house now with a desire to learn from His Word? Or are we just wanting to come back uh, just as is? Well, it's, it's just great to be back, you know. I mean, it's fine. We need to be a people that are known for a desire for God's Word. And as we do so, I believe that God will teach us and He will grow us and bless us as a church because of that. Do we need to have a realignment of our priorities because of this time away? These are the questions that we need to be asking. Because as the children of Israel demonstrated, 
a desire for God's Word, uh, it doesn't matter how far you've strayed or how far you've gone, if you have that desire for God's Word and humility to just ask and say, will you please teach me, God? I know I don't know much, but will you just please show me? I believe that God will take His book and use it to transform your life from the inside out. Uh, the Bible tells us that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And that's what we are in Christ. And how does that happen? How does that process of sanctification work? Well, it's a day-by-day -day learning and growing. You, you're not going to ever get it all right off the bat, right in one moment. But as we daily uh, attempt to pursue God and through His Word, I believe that He will teach us. So there's not only a return to God's Word, but there was a return in worship, number two. Look at verses 5 and 6. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. Verse 6, And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, with lifting up their hands. And they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. This was the first time in a long time that the people had all been able to gather together in the soil of Jerusalem, in the soil of their homeland, to worship God. And as we gather back in God's house, may we be reminded of just how blessed we are to be able to worship the name of the Lord. They were reminded just what a blessing it was just to be able to know the true and living God the way that they did as the children of Israel. All the blessings God has shown to them. And so when they came back into God's house, they were more willing than ever to listen and be attentive to what God had to say to be able to worship the Lord. We need to return to God's house uh, here in the next few weeks ready to worship His name once again. It's important that we as God's people are known to be the people that worship God. What a great testimony that we ought to have to be able to known to be known as worshipers of the Lord. Many times the, the church today can be known for a lot of things, oftentimes for the things that we're against. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. But how about what we're for? How about what we're known for? Is, is your life and my life a daily representation of worshiping God? of what it means to live uh, joyfully as a, a child of God, adopted into His family, saved for all of eternity. Uh, we ought to be known to be a people that worship God as a church family, people that worship God, that genuinely love the Lord for all that He's done for us. And while it's, yeah, it's fine for people to understand what we're against, people ought to know what we're for. We are for the gospel. We are for souls being saved. We are for life transformation that only comes through the power of the gospel. Psalms, uh, the Psalms often speak to this principle of worship. As Psalm 29 verse 2 says, Give unto the Lord the glory due unto His name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Psalm 138 2 also says, I will worship toward thy holy temple. And praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. You see, this is one of the great principles that makes David a man after God's own heart. Constantly throughout the Psalms, he's talking about worshiping God, worshiping the Lord in the beauty of holiness. He understood the, the importance of giving God the honor and glory that is due his name. And certainly we're able to do that as a church family. And what we have to understand is that worship is a lot more than just singing songs on a Sunday morning. Worship is, uh, has this misrepresentation in the church today that worship is just uh, singing or just music. Worship music. It's a whole genre. But worship is something in the Bible that's a lot more than just music. Okay, Praising the Lord, yeah, that is a form of worship. But if you go all the way back, we don't have time for this, but all the way back to Genesis chapter 22 and look at the very first time worship is mentioned, you get a good context of what worship is really about. You see, in Genesis 22, it's the story of Abraham taking his son Isaac that he had been praying and asking God for for so long. And when God told him, I want you to take Isaac up and sacrifice him, Genesis 22 recounts that Abraham says, Come, let us go worship the Lord together to, to Isaac. He knew good and well that he was going to be sacrificing his son, his only son, to the Lord. And he says, come, let us go worship. So to me, that denotes that worship has a lot to do with anything that 
uh, has us sacrificing something to the Lord for His praise, for His honor, for His glory. That's what worship is all about. It's not just singing. It's part of it. But uh, the giving of our tithes and offerings, the giving of just our, our time, simply our time to the Lord, the giving of our time to reading His Word, to being in His house, uh, to sacrificing things of this world so we can honor the Lord. Uh, to, so we can honor the Lord. These are all forms of worship wherein we as Christians ought to participate. So there was a return in worship. What have we grown accustomed to during this time of separation? To worshiping. What have we grown accustomed, uh, accustomed to worshiping? Whether it be uh, just our job or, or making thing, ends meet financially. What are the things that we have just been dedicating so much of our time and attention to needlessly? When it ultimately all of our time, attention, dedication, and purpose belongs to the Lord. What is it that has distracted us during this time more than anything else? The sin that easily besets us. As we gather back into God's house, we ought to have a renewed focus of how great of a blessing that it is to worship our God, our Savior, the one who redeemed us, uh, saved us from hell, saved us from an eternity that we deserved, separated from Him. Uh, but He died on the cross in our place, offering us the free gift of salvation. We ought to worship God for how good He's been to us, for His loving kindness, for how good He's been. So we'll return to worship. Lastly, and very quickly, there was not just a return to God's Word and a return to worship, but finally, there was a return in joy. Uh, read with me just for sake of time, verse number 10. Then He said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared, for this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry. This last part is often quoted. It's often on all kinds of stuff, billboards and, and Christian sayings. It says, For the joy of the Lord is your strength. You see, the people were weeping. When, when Ezra was reading God's Word, and they understood how far that they have come, they were weeping. I really believe that was probably the reason that they were weeping before God. And Ezra said, Look, this is not supposed to be a time of weeping. This is supposed to be a day of rejoicing because God has delivered us. Let the joy of the Lord... Be your strength. It's an often quoted phrase, but it's powerful nonetheless. The Lord has delivered these people out of bondage. He brought them out of a faraway land and brought them back to be able to worship in His temple once again. And because of that, they had a joy unending. May we as God's people, when we look at how God has protected us during this time and delivered us and brought us through, have an overwhelming and contagious joy about us in our lives. We ought to have a return to the joy of the Lord in our lives as God has brought us out back into His house. Let the deliverance of God bring about a joyful spirit in your life and a testimony that's worth sharing. God has given us as Christian people, as believers, and the only true God, an opportunity to use our lives as a testimony during this time. While the world around us is chaotic and crazy, we can have peace and stability and a, a right focus and a joyful spirit that is contagious, that other people will recognize. And that is a good testimony for reason uh, by which we can brag on the Lord to other people because He has been good to us, hasn't He? And He is uh, certainly worthy of all of our attention, of all of our praise, of all of our honor, and of all of our glory. So as we return back to God's house, Bible Baptist Church, may we have that renewed focus, a, a renewed desire for God's Word. Uh, not only that, but have a return to worship. And lastly, have a return in joy. May uh, the time that we're able to gather together, may we just do so with joy, with a joyful uh, spirit, a joyful attitude in the Christian life, to be able to move forward stronger than ever as a church family for the cause of Christ. Uh, thank you for tuning in to this. I hope that it was a blessing to you. Let's pray very quickly. God, thank you for this time, Lord, where we could, get, could gather together and just uh, read your word. Father, I just pray that you would be with our church. Bless it now. Be with all our prayer requests. Lord, we love you. We thank you for Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Good night, and God bless you.